period of the Mexican Revolution of 1910 and World War I effectively militarizes Texas in a grand and great sort of way. Um, the entry of the United States into World War I means that Texas is going to bear even more of the military burden as a zone for training troops. Not only that, but the Texas militia, now reorganized into National Guard regiments, is then organized into essentially National Guard divisions. Um, the Texas National Guard is combined with the Oklahoma National Guard and forms the 36th Division. Uh, 36th Division is formed in the fall of 1917 in trains near, well, in Camp Bowie uh, near Fort Worth. And so we've got a large con collection of troops up in North Texas, 36th Division, which will end up being sent overseas. Um, military aviation also picks up during World War I, and San Antonio becomes one of the great hubs, as does Benbrook Army Airfield uh, south of Fort Worth. And then there's also uh, airfields up around Wichita Falls, which have a great amount of um, training traffic coming and going. Uh, there's also um, camps around Waco, uh, uh, cluster of camps around Austin, including Camp Mabry, uh, some near Houston. And there's a, um, a generally a, a lot more traffic of troops moving around the state because they're getting ready to go and fight the Germans in Europe. Um, there was always rumors of some sort of Mexican-German alliance. And in fact, there's an incident known as the Zimmerman Telegram, uh, which implied that Mexico and Germany had made a pact that if Mexico could distract the United States and keep them busy and out of the war, that Germany would reward Mexico by coming to their assistance and helping uh, Mexico regained its lost territory in the American Southwest. Uh, that all proved to be exaggerated and uh, it would have been pretty tough to pull off. Uh, so, want to address that while we can, but let's talk about troops that leave Texas that go over to Europe uh, to fight the German and Austrian alliance. Um, the 36th Division we've talked about, that's the National Guard guys. They go to France. Uh, but there's also another division that is composed of a large number of Texas troops, the 90th Division. 90th Division is composed of Texas draftees, uh, Texas and Oklahoma draftees, but a lot of Texans in that division as well. They also go to France. So there's two divisions that have a very heavy leavening of Texas troops in them that go and fight in France. And then the 42nd Division, the Rainbow Division, uh, also goes to France, and it has a pretty good amount of uh, Texas draftees among its ranks. Uh, by the end of the war, one million Texans will have registered for the draft, uh, registered to serve in the United States military in World War I, and of those one million that registered, 200,000 actually served. Well, where did they serve? Clearly France, but where in France? The uh, 36th Division... Um, so clearly they, these Texas troops serve in France, but where in France? The 36th Division arrives in the summer of 1918 and serves in the Champagne sector around the city of Rheim. Um, this is uh, actually, they're attached to the French 4th Army and in that capacity fight against German positions uh, along Mont Blanc Ridge, which is west of the Argonne Forest. So the 36th Division is re really more closely aligned with a French army than with the rest of the American army. The 90th Division, we talked about them, draftees. Um, they served with the American Expeditionary Force under General John J. Pershing in the St. Mihiel uh, salient uh, south of Verdun. And then in the fall of 1918, they are shifted and participate in the Meuse-Argonne campaign, which is the last great campaign against the Germans in that part of France. The 42nd Division actually serves between the 90th and the, in the uh, uh, Meuse Valley and the 36th over on the Champagne sector. The 42nd Division serves right in the middle of the Argonne Forest. And so again, more Texans were involved in a very famous uh, sector of the Western Front in 1918. 
about 5,000 Texans died in World War I. Uh, many of these are combat casualties, clearly, but also many of them are caught up in the great flu epidemic that breaks out in 1918 and 1919. Of the Texans that served, three of them earned the uh, Medal of Honor. Uh, one, Daniel Edwards uh, Jr. of Moorville, uh, left a hospital after being shot up. He goes to the hospital, leaves before he's uh, fully uh, healed up, and uh, serving with the uh, uh, First Infantry Division, he fights near the town of Soissons uh, and does a trench raid, personally kills some guys, captures some others, and uh, is wounded again. Uh, so it's a brave act of daring do that earns him the Medal of Honor. Uh, David E. Hayden was a member of the 6th Marines. He was from Texas. And this, this Texan Marine uh, attended a wounded uh, NCO under heavy enemy fire in September of 1918, uh, came to the attention of his higher-ups, and they give him the Medal of Honor for that. Uh, David Barkley of Laredo, however, uh, he's serving with the 89th Division, different outfit. He's not amongst his fellow Texans. Uh, but he uh, wins the Medal of Honor after doing a solo reconnaissance across the flooded uh, Meuse River. Goes across, checks out the German position, sends word on exactly where they are, where they're dug in, where their machine guns are. But on his way back across the Meuse, just before the armistice, I mean, just days away from peace and being able to go back to Laredo, uh, he's swimming back across the Meuse, gets cramped and drowns. And he, too, is awarded the Medal of Honor. So three Texas heroes uh, that come back or essentially participate in World War I and get the nation's highest honor. Uh, but that's what Texas did in World War I.